So, no, I, I wouldn't say I have a passion for HR. Welcome back to Human Resources for the People. It's a human capital revolution. So the federal government is allowing racist language again. We'll need to talk about it. This comes from the changing of the guard with respect to the National Labor Relations Board. The National Labor Relations Board is, uh, is appointed by the president. And as a result, things change. They go back and forth often, right? They go back and forth uh, to the point where employers really don't know what the rule of law is because it's a constant change. So uh, today we're going to be talking about what this means and what happened. Uh, so first off, we'll go back to the General Motors case. Uh, in 2017, a, a union representative had a heated exchange with a manager uh, and about overtime coverage says, I don't give a fuck about your cross training. We're not going to be doing it. And, uh, the, uh, the company suspended him for three days, which, geez, uh, then in uh, a little bit later on, he, uh, the same employee was attending a meeting on subcontracting paint shop work, started yelling, and then, uh, the uh, employee pretended to be a slave, uh, mockingly acting a caricature, caricature of a slave, saying, yes, master, your master, uh, and said that uh, the supervisor wanted to be a good black man, wanted him to be a good black man, and he was suspended for two weeks uh, for his behavior there. Then, uh, just uh, shortly thereafter, he uh, was at a meeting and uh, they were, um, he threatened or appeared to threaten his supervisor saying that he was going to mess him up and then further started playing uh, racially charged and sexually offensive lyrics on his phone for 30 minutes to other employees uh, with, with other employees in the room. Uh, and then uh, the supervisor turned off the music and then Robinson turned it back on and he was suspended for 30 days, which I find odd. I, I, I've never suspended someone for 30 days, but I, I'm sure that that's just a function of the fact that it's a union shop. So that happened. And so this was in, uh, so in, uh, so this happened in 2017 and the question was, what circumstances should profane language or sexually or racially offensive speech lose protections of the National Labor Relations Act? And this is really important. Um, the National Labor Relations Act, for a very long time, uh, allowed racially and uh, racially charged language as long as it was. Uh, circumstantially involved with unionization, circumstantially involved with uh, with protected our, our, uh, activity, and you couldn't uh, discipline employees for using uh, offensive language as long as they were using it in the context of the union. And we'll talk about that in a little bit, but it's it it's a little bit uh, you know a little bit frustrating. Um, the National Labor Relations Board had utilized different standards depending on whether the statements were made to management on social media or on the picket line historically, right? So then the Trump uh, National Labor Relations Board came in and said, no, that's not acceptable in the workplace. Racially charged language isn't acceptable in the workplace and had one uniform standard. Um, and it, under this standard, the employee must first prove that, uh, the employee was engaging in section seven activity, meaning that the employee was organizing other employees, uh, that the employer knew of that activity. Uh, the employer had animus against the section seven activity. So, uh, what this is saying is, uh, with, with, this case with the Trump National Labor Relations Board, they they established a new standard. 
uh, and the new standard was that it had to be fairly clear that the employee was engaging in um, in in uh, or organizing uh, uh, behavior uh, for the racially protected speech to be protected, and and it had to meet this this uh, this standard. You know. He, here, the, the things that uh, Mr. Robinson did in General Motors had, for the most part, nothing to do with his Section 7 rights. They were, he was just being offensive. Um, and General Motors didn't have a particular animus towards it. They'd been uh, unionized for years. Um, but, but because he was racially offensive, you know, that's, why he, uh, that's why he got the discipline. So, so the National Labor Relations Board under the Trump administration sort of supported employers uh, in, in the fight against racially offensive material in the workplace. Well, now we come to today. Uh, the Biden National Labor Relations Board has now supported, the, has overturned the Trump National Labor Relations Board and uh, and and put and got rid of the three or so precedents that was set, right? And and that is again frustrating from a human resources standpoint, but it's it's frustrating from a people standpoint, right? Now, racially charged language is acceptable in the workplace as long as it's under the guise of uh, Section 7 protected activity for unionization. It's not great, uh, right? You know, in the past, and, and what we're going back to is the Atlantic Steel test, which is whether or not there's a pl the, what the place of the discussion is, the subject matter of the discussion, the nature of the employee's outburst, and whether the outburst was in any way provoked by the employer's unfair labor practice. So it, the National Labor Relations Board under Biden is saying, hey, you know, if, if your uh, employer is conducting an unfair labor practice, it's, it's acceptable to uh, call them a slur uh, under the new National Labor Relations Board. It's, and so, as a result, they overturned it on May 1st, 2023. And, you know, this article, which is linked down below, says it's reinstating the employee-friendly setting specific standards. I don't think that this is employee-friendly at all, right? This is allowing, A, threats in the workplace, which is what happened to uh, the person, what happened to the, the manager in the initial, it's uh, encouraging sexually offensive and r racially offensive uh, material in the workplace, which I don't think is employee friendly whatsoever. We don't we don't hold that standard, right? Um, it's it's very uh, frustrating, and as a result. Um, they're overturning it. Uh, the board further emphasized that employees should be able to s exercise Section 7 rights without fear of punishment for the heated expression. So heated expressions, which could, incur, which could and often do include racial slurs, are acceptable to the National Labor Relations Board yet again under the Biden administration. It's just very frustrating. It's uh, it's it, it, disappointing. It's embarrassing, and it's something that you know it's quite clear should not be allowed in the workplace. That's it. Let me know what you think um, uh, down below. Leave comments. Is this a? I mean, do you think that where where does the line? Where should the line be drawn? with respect to uh, organization, and I'll see you on the next video. Bye, guys.